Hello, um, my name is Anita and I'm a midwife lecturer, programme director in midwifery in Dundalk Institute of Technology in the northeast of Ireland. Um, thank you to QQI, thank you to Dawn and thank you to AHEAD for inviting me here today to speak about my case study which is specific to our midwifery programmes in DKIT. We have two full-time Level 8 midwifery programs, uh, uh, Bachelor of Honours degree midwifery programs in DKT, as well as numerous uh, part-time further uh, professional development programs. Um, as it might be quite obvious to most of the people in the room, midwifery is, is a profession uh, that encapsulates both theory and practice. So we have to think about assessment in both of those uh, aspects of, uh, theory and, of theory and practice uh, teaching and learning. So the background to our student profile is we are having a multiple, uh, multiple diversity of students entering into midwifery education. In any room of students, we will have students who are sitting on almost 500 points through the CAO. We will have students coming in through DARE, through HERE, through further education and training, and through our mature entry pathway. So we will have a multiple variety of students within our, within our classrooms. Um, so we really have to adapt and accommodate the strengths of every one of those students because every one of those students will have strengths to bring to the profession of midwifery. So part of how we accommodate everybody's strengths is through what we call inquiry-based learning. And the what and how of inquiry-based learning, I mean, I could stand here for an hour and speak about inquiry-based learning, thankfully I won't be doing that. But essentially what inquiry-based learning is, it really embeds the principles of universal de design for learning. It offers multiple means of engagement, multiple means of representation, and more importantly in this context, multiple means of action and expression. So in a nutshell, what we get our students to do is working in small groups, we give them real world examples of issues that can come up in the clinical area. Um, and within those small groups together, they work through what those issues are and come up with a, a solution to whatever that issue might be. For example, we might give them a, a case history of a person who might be struggling in adaptation to, to new motherhood. And we give them that full case story case history and the students then between themselves and with the help of research they figure out what's the best way to work with this person who is experiencing these struggles but importantly in this context then we ask them how do you demonstrate what you have learned so inquiry based learning assesses two elements which is the product and the process they tell us what they have learned and they demonstrate what they have learned but they also, we also assess how they came about that learning, the process of how they generated that new knowledge and skill set. And we award marks for each of those. So the marking scheme with inquiry-based learning is very transparent and it's very equitable. Um, when it comes to the assessment portion of this, the students decide themselves how they can best demonstrate their, their, their learning. A lot of them will realize that if I'm going to demonstrate how I'm going to speak to someone about transition to parenthood, maybe the best way to demonstrate that knowledge is to actually undertake a role play. And we find that the students self-select self role play a lot of the time when it comes to demonstrating their knowledge. But that is entirely up to them. Now, obviously, each trigger, each case scenario is aligned to our learning outcomes for the module. So there's a clear constructive alignment between learning outcomes, knowledge, con knowledge uh, content, and how that knowledge is demonstrated. So the assessment element, is, we, we look at it as assessment for, of, and as learning. So EBL is a really inclusive way, really inclusive approach. And you can adopt EBL either on a modular level on a, or on a whole program level. It's very, very agile in that respect. Um, so what has been the impact of, of inquiry-based learning within midwifery education? We have been using inquiry-based learning for about 15 years now in midwifery education. We have both very formal assessment through doctoral studies, and we have more informal assessment through module evaluations. And we're finding consistently that there's there's a balance to be had between what are the huge value, what's the huge value of inquiry-based learning versus what some of the challenges are. The values are, the benefits are that it's paced with the students' knowledge, how they want to generate the knowledge, how they pace their own learning. It works with the strengths of the students. 
So it's not somebody who is very good at reading and writing, or it's not somebody who's very good at oral communication. It's everybody's strengths is recognized within um, Aquaria-based learning. Um, it is very authentic. They really, really value authentic case scenarios, what they're going to meet in the clinical area, and that brings real meaning to their learning. Um, and they enjoy it, they engage with it. And Terry Barrett, who is one of the biggest kind of proponents of inquiry-based learning within Ireland, calls inquiry-based learning hard fun. And that's really what it is. They enjoy it, but it can pose some challenge. And what those challenges are is a level of discomfort with how inquiry-based learning works. A lot of times students come into college and expect us to teach. My role in inquiry-based learning is as a facilitator of learning. I don't stand up and teach them. They generate their own knowledge, and in that way, it's much deeper learning and remains with them throughout their careers uh, over the next 20 or 30 years. And that metacognitive way of knowing how they learn stays with them as well. So there's a general discomfort initially in the students not being taught and in them learning for themselves. So my role then is as a facilitator to guide them in their learning. And that can be sometimes a challenge for academics, is to you know, offload that traditional role of teacher and allow the learning to take place within a growth mindset environment. So there are definite challenges. Um, but over the, over the 15 years, I'd say we've met a lot of them and we're able to accommodate them and address a lot of those challenges. Um, Susan Sturgis writes a brilliant piece on working with groups uh, uh, amongst people who, who have um, autism um, or autistic students and we really value her perspective and her principles of working with, with people um, who might have additional challenges working in groups. So what are my reflections around inquiry-based learning, inclusive assessment? Well, inquiry-based learning is not the panacea. I, I think, as, as Dr. Lee men mentioned earlier on, there's no one type of assessment that's going to address every single aspect of inclusivity. Um, but at least inquiry-based learning offers a mechanism uh, or an approach that will allow us to become more inclusive in how we assess students' knowledge and how we assess their ways and means of learning. What is really important is that we cannot unbolt assessment from inclusive teaching um, and that there has to be constructive alignment between, from our perspective, the requirements and standards of the midwifery profession, the module learning outcomes and the case scenarios that we develop and deliver uh, to the students. Um, the, one of the biggest feedback, <coughs> positive feedbacks that comes from inquiry based learning is the contemporaneous feedback that we give to students. So we give students feedback continuously over the module that builds on their learning and allows them to scaffold their learning as they go along. So that's a huge element of inquiry-based learning. Um, but it, it, it offers benefits, huge benefits, but it also offers some challenges, which I'm more than happy to discuss um, further if anyone would like to uh, discuss those further. Um, thank you so much. I think my six minutes are probably up now. Thank you so much for your attention. Um, there's a QR code with my contact details if anyone would like to um, make contact. So thank you. I love that concept of, of hard fun. That's, that's, I really like that. It's like some of the, the, the things that are kind of leveled when we, when we bring this work to people, bring these ideas to people, are, are you know, they shout about rigor. You know, are we lo losing the rigor? And really, this is not what we're trying to do. Actually, what we're trying to do is reduce barriers to accessing the challenge and the rigor in the first place. You know, it's this unproductive struggle that we often have to engage in uh, to actually just reach the, the, the sort of start of the challenge in the first place. So I really appreciate that, uh, that sort of hard fun idea.